Okay, so I'd like to keep you up to date with emulation news, that type of thing, and new things going on in emulation. So I've actually just came across a really, really cool front end. Let's show you what this is. This is Retro Virtual Machine. And Retro Virtual Machine is pretty much an 8-bit front-end emulator. It's got built-in emulators. All we need to do is download this and set them up, and you get a screen, like an old-school screen. And as it says just here, it emulates the ZX Spectrum, CPC, MSX1, uh, Sega SG-1000. And if you go onto this website, and it's going to be in my description, we've also got a very cool feature by the developers behind this of using their HTML codes to embed their software into your website so you can show off your games. So let me show you how this works. If we go to download, it's going to show us this actually works with Mac OS Linux based operating systems. Uh, I'm going to go for the Windows version of this. And uh, yeah, Robocop's in the background. I'm a big fan and I'm also looking forward to the new Rogue City game. It looks pretty awesome. So let's open up this and drag it onto the desktop and I'm going to show you just how cool this really is. So we can close this down now, and if I open up Retro Virtual Machine, I've just dragged onto my desktop, it's going to give us a little interface. So here's something I built earlier on today, but let me show you how I got to this. So once you download this, if you go up to the three horizontal lines just here, if you go to Create Machine, and from here, uh, there's a selection of five different computers. And we've also got a couple of Sega systems here, which looks like the Master System and the really old Sega 1000, SG-1000. I'm going to show you how to load up the Amstrad CPC. So I've got a disk image for this. If I just highlight Amstrad CPC, and of course we want the 6128 model, because this one's got the built-in disk drive. If I go to next, and we'll find it's got a different range of options of language here. The top one's English, so I'm going to select that and create. And I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this one 6128. And I'm going to just save this file to my desktop. And this remembers what it is we've created. So here's our Amstrad CPC 6128. And to power this on, we just go to the power at the top here, and it boots up just like a real 6128 would. So to load our game, we got two options here. We got our cassette tape option, and we got a disc option. So let's go for the disc option for this. And I'm going to insert my floppy disk into this virtual machine. So we got an external drive here, and we've also got the built-in drive for the 6128. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to insert. And from here, I can find my game, which is Cybernoid. If I just double left click, and if you could hear that, that's actually like a click like the mechanism. So let's load this up. So I'm pretty sure to load Amstratus Cap. And there we go. So it's showing us the contents of that disk I've just inserted. And then I'm going to type in run quote. Cyber 2, I believe. You have to bear with me. I'm not too used to Amstrad. But it looks like it's loading. And here we go. So how cool is this? So do you want pokes? Uh, no, I certainly don't. I just want the actual game. Thank you. So let's make this screen bigger. If I double left click on that. And if we click just here... It tells us the track number it's currently on. And this, this isn't cool enough for you if you're into this type of thing. I'm going to show you something even more cooler with Spectrum in a second. So as we can see, it's actually flashing. This little light is actually flashing. So it's active. It's actually loading from that disk. If we go up to the screen just here... If we go up to the screen just here, we can mess around with scan lines, mask, and we can even give it a really old school look. So we can add some RF connection fuzz going on here. Random offset is going to give it a wavy blur, and you, you know, you get the picture. It 
Okie doke, so I've got my PS3 controller plugged in. I'm going to make this full screen. So uh, let's take a look. Number one to start game. And here we go. I've not even configured this. It's just picked it up my USB PS3 controller I always use for my gaming, retro gaming videos. But uh, yeah, like I said, if I come across anything like this, and I think this is a really good find for a lot of my subscribers and passers-by who's not aware of this program, I think you're in for a treat with this if you're into this. So let me just show you what ZX Spectrum has to offer. This is super cool. If you're into cassette tapes, like I am, you're going to like this one. So we're going to open that up, power it on, and let's just adjust that first. You know, it's... Uh, bit much uh, so scan lines right down we can put the noise down and don't really want that blur we're in 2023 nowadays there's no need of it at all so let me just show you something else we've actually actually even got the screen curvature which gives it that round effect <laughs> it's just so cool so let's load up my tape game if i just go to the tape here and it opens up a tape deck i'm going to insert my tape by pressing stop ejects like you would a real cassette player and locate my cassette tape and I've got a dot zip of future night if I double left click now because I've set this up is 128k we've got this loader screen so I'm going to just use this my keys on my keyboard and press enter to tape tape loader and press play like it says and the real the machine on the tape deck it actually loads with the game and if I go here, we can change this so it tells us how long the cassette tape has got left to load. So I'm going to let this just run a minute and I'm going to just skip on the video so you can see everything. So here we go, it's loaded up and as we can see on the cassette reel just here, it's all diverted to the right hand side, meaning it's loaded. And obviously Spectrum is a little bit fussy with controls, so the best option for Spectrum then is going to be to use Kempston. So if we just go up to the D-pad here. It will give us a range of different inputs how we want to play these Spectrum games. So, like I said, for the best results, you're really going to go with Joystick Kempston. So, on my keyboard, I'm going to just press number 2 to select Kempston Joystick. And I'm still using my PS3 controller. If I press 0 to start game. And there we go. So, we still got the same options like with the Amstrad I was just playing. If we go here, again, to the screen... Uh, mess around with the scan lines and let's check out that screen curvature option. Look at that. How cool is this? So let's make this into a full screen So uh, by the looks of it the developer um, Was kind of inspired by his dad. I believe something like that. He's no longer with us um, And it's kind of dedicated to uh, the main coders dad by the seems of it so it's seriously, seriously a cool system and although there's only Spectrum, Amstrad and a couple of other machines on there at the moment, it looks like the team are actually building on this. So at some point we might even see Commodore 64 and if that happens I'm obviously going to be very happy because I'm a big Commodore geek. So this is it. So like I say, for those that want to try this, I'll leave the link in my description. And um, yeah, like I say, if you're a big nostalgia geek like myself and you actually enjoy spending 10 minutes watching a cassette tape load, then it's up to you. But the option is there and as you can see, there's no, no denying actually that this is pretty super cool if you're into that type of thing. So until next time, stay retro.